I wanted to show you some of the knives that I have put handles on over the years. And uh, one of the earlier ones I've got, I've done lots of things like this for people and for my family. But uh, this is a, a piece of antler that I found, was given. I don't know. I don't deer hunt. But I, uh, I wanted to do something with the handle. And I love this blade shape. This was easily been 30 years ago. And I remember trying to figure out how to make that antler fit that tang. And uh, I was in the cellar literally just a just an underground cellar of a house that I was renting and I used a cutoff wheel uh, on an improvised uh, drill to cut a slot in this antler so some of you are cringing right now because you know what that would have smelled like and uh, my wife upstairs was wondering what in the world I was burning downstairs but I used a, a slot to cut this into the antler and fit this knife into there and uh, able to drill the holes to put some uh, pins in it. it looks like they're probably just nails that uh, I made fit and uh, I liked using that for a steak knife and it's a good design for snake knife steak knife I don't know what in the world I got on the blade I don't um, I don't keep my blades pristine I've used this for something but uh, Another knife shape that I found, uh, this is a German blade that I found that was, um, you know, for sale, not too expensive, probably 10 bucks or something. And I had something, some wood that I wanted to use, and I've used it on, on other projects, but locust, and if you're familiar with locust, it comes in different kinds, different species, I guess, but it's very hard wood. They use it um, for fence posts and stuff in places because it is decay resistant and uh, I want to make the handles for this knife out of that locust and, and have that. That was, made a wonderful steak knife. Uh, got a great patina on it. Somebody mentioned that patina is rust, but patina and rust are two different things in my book. It might be technically the same, but it got a nice patina on it. It was shiny back in the day, but nice little handle. This is an example of some things I've done for my my kids uh, this is one of my daughters I took an, an old Barlow knife that uh, it's not maybe technically a Barlow but anyway it was made by Imperial and uh, Imperial to me was a, a cheap knife that you could buy in any hardware store back in the day and I got a hold of this and it probably had the cheap thin tin handles on it or something well I took the handles off and I just made some oak handles for it and pinned them on and uh, that worked out really well. My daughter likes that and has had this for, for plenty of years. I don't know, 20, 25 years, probably more like 20. But, um, and so one day I wanted to make her one that matched that with an oak handle. And uh, I had bought some blades that uh, I'd make different things out of, uh, different styles of knife. And I made this one for her to match her other one with the oak handle. And I put a, a just a, tip of an antler on there for a finger guard and just made a, a sheath to fit it. Enjoyed that a lot and she still has those. So I wanted to show those to you. I've featured these in other knife video about uh, about bone handled knives, but these are deer leg bone knives, uh, blades that I purchased. Uh, this was an old hunting knife that was found. My mom found it at a flea market or something and I took the handle off of it. It was cheap and I put this deer leg bone on there. And I tried doing that with this blade and never did quite like how it came out and didn't figure out what to do with it next. But thank you all for subscribing. I'll show you something that I did uh, kind of for one of my sons and kind of just for the yard. I had a an old uh, saw blade. I don't know exactly where this came from. It's awfully wide and it's fairly thick and uh, must have been a metal cutting blade or a very fine tooth uh, saw. But I just took that and I sharpened the back end of it for a knife and I just stuck it in a piece of broom handle and put some copper rivets in it that I had laying around for just a yard knife for my kids to mess around with or for doing some basic cutting. And it was just experimenting uh, but I still have it, and it's not elegant, and it's not great, um, but it's a knife, and I like knives. I'll show you that my uh, my mother-in-law uh, is no longer with us, but 
she had this kitchen knife that she really liked. She acted like it was her favorite knife. It's just a, a thin, you know, 1940s, 1950s, uh, maybe early 60s kitchen knife. But the handle had broken on her or something, and she asked me if I could put one on there. And so I just took a chunk of oak and shaped it and uh, epoxied the tang down in there. And I see it now. It needs a, a coat of oil and needs a little tender, loving care. I might have made that handle just a little bit too big for my mother-in-law. That just seemed more of a handle my size. But that was years ago, years, years ago. And um, she never complained, And but I don't know if she ever used it. Well, along those lines, also, I made a, a knife and fork set for my dad and, and his wife. My mom has been gone for a while, and he's remarried. And, and I just took a, a kitchen knife, um, took off the cheap plastic handles, and took a fork that matched it and got rid of its cheap plastic handles. And, and the significant part of this is that the, the handles are made from red bud. So there's a type of tree called the red bud tree. And... Uh, my dad's wife had that in her yard, a redbud tree, and uh, it had been cut down. One of her grandsons had cut it down, clear some room or something, and I took some of that wood and got to looking at it, and it was just a gorgeous color and uh, had had great uh, grain structure and all of that. So I decided to make this uh, kitchen set for, for my dad and for his wife. And uh, they've had to move and uh, no longer need it. And again, I'm not sure they ever used it. I see that with age, the finish I put on it, I don't know if it was a, uh, a polyurethane. I use a lot of times on wood uh, gunstock finish. And, uh, but I see that it started to age and now I can see where a uh, slight overlap got on the metal and this, it's all yellowed. And... But anyway, it's a good looking handle, good looking wood. And, uh, and I enjoyed making that. And finally, I made this steak knife uh, for my dad. Now the steak knife was already, the blade was already um, established. Somebody had commented, and I loved the comment, that um, they liked finding old knives and taking the cheap handles off of them and rehandling them. And that's exactly what this is. Somebody gave me a set of steak knives that had a wonderful design in the blade, but had a really cheap plastic handles that were, I don't know, supposed to be ivory looking or something like that. And I've used, I had six or eight of these and I've used them for different knives to give to people with different handles. But this one I did for my dad. I made it from some spalted oak that I had. And I, I love the, the spalting in this oak. Um, I was talking to a forester once who told me he'd never heard of the word spalted. And uh, in woodworking, people know what spalted is. It's a fungus or something that starts attacking wood. And if you can catch it before it deteriorates the wood, you get all this great coloring in there. And so I made the sheath to match it, uh, just a thing to hold it. And um, just I love the spalted oak. But more than that, I wanted to show you that the end, the butt cap on, on the knife and the, the end parts on this wooden sheath are made from kumquat. My dad had a kumquat tree one time that he cut down. Kumquat trees aren't very big and uh, I wanted to, to keep the trunk from it. It wasn't very big, but it turns out that that kumquat, and I guess lots of citrus trees are like this, the wood is very dense. Now it's kind of bland in terms of grain structure or anything but it's um it's very dense and so because it was from my dad's yard his kumquat tree i used a kumquat to to put the butt cap on this handle and this sheath put a brass pin in there to hold it i think that that was a screw that i put down in there with epoxy and then i just uh i just sanded it uh, flat, you can't tell it's screw anymore. I've got some spacer material. It was uh, two reds and a white. I have red and white spacer material, black also that I use in knife handles. But I love doing that and uh, enjoy this gorgeous piece. I love it. Thank you for subscribing and watching. I hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up.